Today I have with me Mike Giannazio, W5REZ. Mike has just started a new business selling antennas for ham radio operators, and I'm a sucker for a good entrepreneurial story. And when I saw his posts on Instagram, I reached out to him to find out more about the company and more about his effort, and he agreed to talk to me today about this new venture. Hi, Mike. Hi, Kevin. How are you today? I'm doing well. So I think the backstory is that you've been researching this particular antenna design for a couple of years. And just recently, within the last weeks, actually went to market. Um, yeah, so I kind of first started down this path. I uh, got interested in parks on the air, uh, you know, shortly after I got my uh, general license and uh, started looking at different um, antennas that I could put up, uh, portable and uh, kind of wanted something that uh, didn't need a tuner, you know, uh, didn't want to haul that extra piece of gear. So started looking at different compact uh, resonant antennas and uh, sort of decided, hey, you know, I, I do just want a kind of a base loaded, simple vertical and uh, started looking around, didn't really see exactly what I wanted. So started to uh, come up with some plans to make my own and uh kind of just went down this path slowly and uh, then it turned into um you know hey maybe i should sell these since i'm not seeing these out there maybe other people would like to uh, have a few of these uh, of their own so uh decided to kind of start putting together a little business plan and uh working on that um uh, on nights and weekends and and took a while to get together but uh here we are we just launched uh end of last month and uh, starting to slowly get these out on the market. Well, that's very exciting. Congratulations. Let's go back to those early days of Parks on the Air, because I'm curious about that. Uh, when did you first get licensed and when did you first get involved with Parks on the Air? So I got licensed in the fall of 2020. And then uh, 2021, I uh, picked up the uh, Parks on the Air bug, just you know, saw a couple videos on YouTube started watching, uh, activations and just thought, wow, that's really cool. And my wife and I are, we're really into camping. So, uh, you know, I figured, well, it's a great combination. You know, we go camping, I'll bring the radio, uh, take a little time, have some, have some radio time and then, you know, go hiking or something. So, uh, tried it out. And then, uh, a friend of mine who, uh, got me back into ham radio, um, we can talk about that in a minute, but, uh, he, you know, lent me his antenna. And so I took my, uh, ICOM 7300 with me and, uh, went out there and did my first activation. And really just ever since then, I've just, that's the, really the way I like to operate now. You know, I live in a, an HOA, so I got a lot of noise on the bands here but once i get out in the parks it's nice and quiet and uh can really have a lot of fun so uh, it's a very enjoyable activity for me and uh don't see any end to it well i can totally relate um, as most people know that listen to these these interviews i got relicensed about a year ago and the first thing i came across was uh, someone saying cq photo and uh and almost immediately got involved and that freedom of just going out um, on the road, going to a park, being outside and operating was uh, very liberating, very much, very fun. So since you ended up getting into the antenna business, I'm really curious what those first antennas were that you used that potentially you were dissatisfied with. Sure. Well, it's kind of funny. The um, first antenna I used was the Chameleon m 2, and I was not dissatisfied with it at all. Uh, it, it works great, um, but... I just didn't want to take a tuner with me for, you know, whatever reason, I just didn't want that extra piece of gear. So, um, and you don't have to use a tuner on every band with it, but some of them you do. And, um, so I started looking at other, you know, other options and, and kind of started to narrow it down into using a, a coil of some kind, uh, to, you know, match that shortened antenna. So, um, I saw a few of them out there. Um, you know, some of them are built better than others and uh, decided that they it was kind of like they didn't all have the features I wanted. It's like one had this and one had that. And so I was like, well, you know, I kind of want to start building these things together into one one uh, product and uh, 
and went ahead and, and did that. I've also, you know, at first I had a, a, a homebrew, uh, like a random wire, like a 75 foot random wire that I was using, uh, with a five to one un and on it. And that worked pretty good. Um, you know, I'd just throw that up in a tree. And, um, uh, at that point, you know, I had gotten to a park, there weren't any trees that would work and have enough rope with me. And I was like, man, you know, it'd really be nice to have a self-supporting antenna. And so that's where I'm like coming down that road of wanting something that's, uh, kind of self-contained. You don't have to worry about the environment you're going to be in. You know, if you've got your parts with you, you're golden, you can set up anywhere. And, uh, so that was another thing that I was looking for. And, uh, that kind of sort of, you know, led into, into what I'm doing. So if you don't mind, be specific about what makes up your antenna, what, what those elements were that, that were important to you that you built into your, your design. Yeah. So the biggest and main thing is just the build quality of it. Um, you know, I wanted to use some, some really strong materials, some premium materials, um, and, and machine these parts custom so that they, number one, they looked good because that was important to me, just having a nice aesthetic to it. But also, of course, uh, beyond that, the performance of, of the antenna itself, you know, relating to the structural performance. Um, so what we have is our, our coil is machined from Delrin, which is a very strong, um, composite and, uh, it works really well. It's almost as strong as aluminum, but you get obviously the benefit of it being an insulator. So, um, structurally it's very strong. It's a solid piece of Delrin all the way through. Um, and then we, we put it in a lathe and mill the, um, groove in it that the wire follows. Uh, so then we wrap them up and then we've got some stuff going on on the, on the inside to keep it all together. And, um, also wanted to make it self-contained so that there wasn't a separate feed point that you had to take with you. So it's just one piece. You don't have to carry two pieces. Um, there's pros and cons to that. Of course, you know, um, you're not going to center load an antenna with the coil that we make, but I don't really see too many people doing that portable anyways. Um, just for the simple fact that, you know, you start center loading something, it becomes top heavy. So then you have to start maybe thinking about guys and the wind and, and all that. And, you know, the performance is better, but I don't know how much you're really going to notice the difference. You know, you still got the, the coil loss and everything. So, um, just decided to go with the, with the design that we have the base loaded and, uh, make it all integrated. Um, the other thing was the, uh, collar, the tuning collar on it. We, um, we kind of looked at some of the stuff that was out there and thought, well, how could we improve this a little bit? And, uh, ours is machined with a really, uh, tighter tolerance around the coil itself. So there's not a lot of gap in there. There's not a lot of wiggle and it helps keep the clip that's on there tighter against it. And it also helps with just being able to tune it a little smoother. Um, so you're, you're getting that advantage. And then at the very top, there's, um, there's a part where the coil will come up and stop and, uh, the stop aligns the clip perfectly with the very first turn. So if you want to just feed the, the whip itself directly to get the highest band, you could, just run it up and it's real easy to find that point. And then underneath that, when you get to the top, I, uh, uh, this was one of like the design iterations we went through. Um, I noticed when the, when the, um, coil got to the top because of the way that we had it built with the tolerances, it needed to have something supporting it underneath. Cause once you go past that wire, now you've got this play, right? So, we brought the, uh, the OD of the top of that coil out a little bit, uh, or I should say the, the coil form that it's wrapped on out a little bit to match the exact size of the, uh, outer diameter of the coil. So once it goes up, it's perfectly the same as it was on the coil. So that helps keep it nice and tight when you're running those top bands. So Mike, I'm curious how you sourced all these different materials and, and pieces. Did you have some experience with this? How did you, 
How do you know who to call? Not, not really. I just kind of, you know, started looking around. I have, uh, as far as the machining process goes, I do have a little bit, tiny bit of experience with, with machining. Um, when I was in high school, I worked for my uncle. He does industrial pump and valve repair. So, you know, we're making custom parts for stuff that's either, you know, obsolete that needs to be repaired. You know, they don't want to buy new stuff. So we're making custom parts for that. Um, we did some of that just manual machining in our shop there. And then, uh, he of course has somebody that he uses that has a CNC shop. And so that's the first, first person I thought of and, you know, started sending him drawings kind of like on a napkin sort of thing, you know? <laughs> And saying, you know, this is what I want to do. You think we could do something like this? And he was uh, really willing to help me out and start uh, making prototype parts. So um, that's where we where we started. And as far as the other stuff, you know, the accessories that come with it, I just started basically Google searching, you know, how to find this stuff, how to buy it in, in bulk, uh, you know so that you're getting a little bit of profit margin on the stuff and making it, uh, making it worthwhile to do. And then, you know, bringing a good product to people that, uh, you know, I'm spending the time to, to try to find the good stuff. And, and that way people don't have to worry about that. They can just come to us and it's all taken care of. So you've mentioned we a few times. Is there, do you have a partner? No, well, it's just me, but you know, of course, um, I got a lot of support from my uncle and, uh, my wife helps me a lot. So, um, you know, we're, we're not really, uh, they're not really technically like employees or anything, but you know, that's kind of my, my support system. And so that's where that we is coming from. I totally and understand. Of course, there's, always, there's always a team. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, of course I got to mention my dad too. He's a, he's a photographer, a commercial photographer. He's been doing it for 30 plus years. So he helped me out a lot, uh, with the photography and the web design and everything. So, um, you know, really lucky to have that and not, uh, not have to really pay a whole lot for it because, you know, it, getting, getting all that done is very expensive. So, um, definitely lucky in that regard. So are you assembling based upon orders or do you have them ready to ship? Yeah, right now I am assembling as things are ordered. Um, pretty much just trying to figure out the demand right now, um, putting together a plan. And the, the plan is to have things in stock and plan ahead and, and get our orders in. But, uh, you know, right now, since we just started out, I didn't really know how many orders to expect. So I had parts being made already in anticipation for launching it. And, uh, we had a little bit more demand than we thought, but the lucky part is, is that the machine shop we were working with, they uh, or are working with rather, they kind of did me a, a solid by, by actually making more parts than I ordered for me. <laughs> so, uh, that that's good. So they've got, uh, we've got about 30 of them that are going to be coming in right now. And I think we have 27 or 28 orders to fill. So we're going to have that. And then I'm going to probably have them start just making more parts. And, and he had kind of told me, Hey, you know, um, I'm going to set up these machines. I'm going to run just a bunch of them and I'll put them on a shelf for you. And when you're ready for them, let me know. And I, you can just basically buy them from me. And Mike, how are you getting the word out? How, how are you letting amateur radio operators know that there's this new antenna on the market? Yeah. So to get the word out, we, uh, we started, the first thing we did was contacted some YouTubers. And, uh, one of the first ones was Michael Martin's, uh, KB9 BBR, uh, to respond to me and, and, uh, said, yeah, you know, I'd love to love to review the antenna. So of course we only had one, <laughs> just a pre-production model. Uh, so I sent that out to him and, and he, uh, put it through its paces and, and sent it back to me. And, uh, right after that, I went to a ham fest here, uh, in Texas, just outside of Houston and, uh, just kind of manned the table and answered questions and, um, you know, we got a few orders those couple days. So that was really cool. And, 
and to see people kind of look at it in person and understand it and um, kind of uh, hear feedback and like, oh, that's really, you know, this design feature is really cool or that design feature is really cool. And, uh, you know, hearing that feedback is good because it's like, okay, well, I wasn't just, you know, (laughs) thinking of something that just I wanted, you know, Uh, other people can kind of see the benefit. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much been kind of our our marketing plan is just um, get the word out with with YouTube and uh, go to the ham fests. And then hopefully as these get out on the market, we'll, uh, we'll get a lot of word of mouth going as well. So uh, we're just going to keep kind of going down that road. If somebody would like to know more information or buy an antenna, what's your website? So the website is rezantenna.com. Pretty simple and straightforward. Yep. Very simple. <laughs> and, uh, you can go there. Everything's on the website. Uh, if you send a message through there, I'm the one that answers it. So, um, you know, like I said, it's pretty much me doing doing most of the work, assembly and everything. So I'm pretty pretty familiar with the, everything that's going on. So uh, happy to happy to answer emails. Well, Mike, congratulations on the new company and I wish you well. I think it's really exciting. And thank you for joining me here today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I've been talking to Mike, W5REZ. He's got a brand new antenna. You should all check it out, whether you're into parks in the air or not. Uh, Thank you for joining me.